conceived initially as a pure flying boat, the US Navy had recognized a need for a new patrol bomber to counter the potential for a Japanese threat in the Pacific. They were used extensively in almost all theaters of World War II, initially in the Pacific, then on into the Battle of the Atlantic, where, Colin, these aircraft fulfilled a very important role indeed. Yes, they did. The one thing that uh, Churchill, in his memoir, said that he was afraid of were these submarines that were taking such a heavy toll of, the, of our uh, Atlantic. A lot of the uh, submarines, of course, so the majority of their attacks were, in fact, on the surface. But we all have seen the films of... Uh, those uh, wartime exploits of the, uh, of the submarines and they always seem to be you know, underwater and hiding but the majority of the attacks were on the surface and if a submarine was on the surface the last thing you want to see is this coming towards it. John Cruikshank of number 210 squadron and the Canadian flight lieutenant David Hornell of number 162 squadron both are pressing home attacks against German U-boats while under heavy fire. Cruikshank's survival was remarkable given that he was hit in 72 places on his body and his navigator was killed. Yet the co-pilot did most of the flying en route back from the middle of the North Atlantic to Sullum Bow in the Shetlands. despite the fact that the co-pilot in question had also been injured in that engagement. It was a remarkable display of heroism, just one of the many involving the more than 4,000 Catalinas that were built in total, some of them built in the Soviet Union where they were called GSTs, some of them built in Canada where they were called Cansos, and this aircraft is one such. Uh, some of the crew members to Biscarros in France, that great location for what the French call hydraviation, aviation from water. <laughs> but more of that in the coming weeks. theatres. There is another link with fighters to do with the colour scheme on this aircraft because it's marked up as a US Army Air Force OA-10A rescue Catalina which was flown by the 5th Emergency Rescue Squadron from Halesworth in Suffolk in early 1945. The aircraft was trying to pick up the crew of a downed US Army Air Force fighter and landed on the water in order to do so. But the crew found that the starboard engine had failed. They taxied and they were rescued five days later and the loss of that Catalina is amongst the aircraft commemorated on the Counting the Cost exhibit, the uh, glass sculpture along the entrance road to the American Air Museum. It features the silhouettes of all of the US Army Air Force and indeed some US Navy aircraft that were lost on operations from Britain during the Second World War.
aircraft captain today by former Royal Air Force Hercules and Andover transport pilot Derek Head, who latterly flew Boeing 737s for Thompson Fly. And with him on the flight deck today as co-pilot is a very experienced Irish airline captain, former airshow organiser, former airshow commentator in Ireland, Angelo Cunningham. And here's a special message for Walter Cigaris in Walter yeah, but uh, tactically, from the point of view of fighting, we didn't know any difference because we didn't know how to fight in a gauntlet. Nobody told us. As with any new aircraft, the Spitfire had its teething troubles. There were early difficulties. 